in the studying of this uh, Nama and Rupa, Abhidhamma talks, talks about four ultimate realities. Abhidhamma teach these four ultimate realities. They are Chitta, Consciousness, Chaitasika, and mental factors, Rupa, Matter, Nibbana, Final salvation, final goal of Buddhism. So, these four realities are called as Paramatta Dhamma in Pali. Paramatta Dhamma. Then you can uh, have a kind of image about Abhidhamma and its uh, construction. Abhidhamma. Uh, does not deal about the conventional. It completely deals with the ultimate or what is called Paramatta. So, uh, when we go to the text of Abhidhamma, you do not find kind of uh, names of the person, places, of, uh, names of the places and uh, the stories, you do not find. The Abhidhamma text uh, uh, completely deal with the uh, ultimate truth, what is called Paramatta Dhamma. So that's why most of people uh, uh, say that the Abhidhamma is uh, very deep to understand. That is true, but if you uh, study more and more, uh, you can understand Abhidhamma teachings are very helpful uh, to understand the teachings of suttas in a uh, detail way, in a detailed manner, right? So as I mentioned you earlier, Abhidhamma deals with ultimate realities, why these are called as ultimate, paramatta? Because these realities exist and there are no other realities. All the uh, realities can be included under these four sections. Uh, the first three are called as uh, condition because they arise from causes and they all conditioned by other occurrences. The last one, Nibbana, is called as unconditional reality. So this is uh, kind of general introduction to Abhidhamma uh, because I wanted to say something in the beginning of the talk but I'm not going to talk about these four realities because it is not the time. So what I'm going to talk here is about uh, consciousness, Chitta. When you hear about Chitta and Chetasika also uh, uh, deals with the consciousness. According to the commentary, Chitta and Chetasika, uh, consciousness and mental factors arise together. So, uh, therefore, sometimes, even though we, uh, the, the Abhidhamma uh, anal uh, analyzes these are separate parts, I mean, separate factors, Chitta and Chetasika, uh, they are connected to each other, right? They arise together. The word chitta, first we need to discuss uh, in short about this uh, term, chitta. The word chitta is derived from the root chit, to think. As I mentioned you earlier, chitta is the Chitta is that which is the chief in experiencing an object. <coughs> According to Buddhist psychology, the chittas uh, are classified in different states. Uh, so, as you know that there are 89 states of consciousness, then they are uh, developed into 121. So, however, here, uh, 
I'm going to talk about not all, uh, not all these 89 states of consciousness. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the unwholesome consciousness, akusala jittas, and also the uh, karma sobhana jittas, what is called beautiful consciousness. So, 89 consciousness are divided into four parts, four sections according to the spheres. All the 89 consciousness, states of consciousness are divided into these four parts. Kama Vacharajitas, consciousness experience in the sense sphere, Kama Loka, and Rupa Vacharajitas, consciousness experience in the five material sphere, there are 15. Arupa Vacharajitas, consciousness mostly experience in the immaterial sphere, Arupa Loka, there are 12. A Lokuttara Jittas, Consciousness experience in the Supra Monday level, there are 8. So all the 89 uh, states of consciousness are divided into these 4 sections. Right? So except these 89, there is no another, none of other consciousness. So this is the classification as mentioned earlier, this is a kind of diagram you can see these 89 jittas and how they are divided into parts. So what I am going to talk about here is the 12 akusala jittas, 12 unwholesome consciousness, right? And also uh, karma sobhana jittas. In Kama Sobhana Chittas, beautiful consciousness, uh, I'll be speaking about only Maha Kusala Chittas, wholesome consciousness. Right? Because we have a limited time, uh, we have to uh, talk about uh, only the, uh, these uh, selected parts which I mentioned earlier. Spears. You know about the spears. This is kind of general introduction to spears. So, uh, since spear refers to the four fire boards and the human abode and six stable abodes. In all these abodes, sensual pleasure is enjoyed. Therefore, it is called karma sovana chittas. This is what we need, uh, we want to know here. So. Other, in other uh, spheres, different types of consciousness are experienced. I'm not going to talk about them. Now, uh, I come to the point that I uh, want to discuss today. Uh, as I mentioned you earlier, today I will be speaking about uh, uh, unwholesome consciousness and beautiful consciousness. Here, uh, you can see under the Karma Vacharajitas, there are 54 Karma Vacharajitas experienced in the uh, Karma Loka. The first part, unwholesome consciousness, Akusala Chittas, right? There are 12. 12 Akusala Chittas and the uh, last one, Beautiful Consciousness, what is called Kama Sobhan Chittas. There are uh, 24 actually, but I will be speaking about only the first eight, right? Maha Kusala Chittas. So, the 12 unwholesome consciousness and also the eight Maha Kusala Chittas are to be discussed here right so before that i wanted to give you some kind of introduction here that's why i mentioned all of these things right
Right. Akusala chintas unwholesome consciousness. Uh, why these are called unwholesome? Because uh, these uh, consciousness lead to unwholesome actions, which in turn produce unwholesome results. That's why they are called as unwholesome, akusala. Right? So, 12 unwholesome uh, chittas are classified into three classes. You know that when you study Abhidhamu, uh, more classifications, right? You find more classifications, more divisions. Sometimes when you go through these uh, uh, classifications, uh, you feel that it, uh, it, it is bore, very boring to study sometimes, right? But uh, analyzing is very important to understand something very clearly, right? <laughs> So, these 12 unwholesome chittas are divided into three parts, three sections mainly. Consciousness rooted in greed, right? Lobamula chittas. There are eight Lobamula chittas. Consciousness, consciousness rooted in hatred. Those are Mula chittas. There are two. Consciousness rooted in delusion. Moha Mula Jittas. Two. There are two. When you hear the Pali terms, Loba Mula Jittas. Mula. Mula means the root. Then you can understand the Loba or greed is the root for this consciousness. Right? Those are Mula Jittas. Mula is the root. Hetu. Right, so uh, hatred is uh, the root for these two, the second, and more mula jittas, more delusion. Delusion is the root for these two consciousness. Right, first, I'm going to talk about uh, the lower mula jittas consciousness rooted in greed. Right, there are eight. There are eight. Here you can see four. The rest of others can be seen next. The first one. Somanasa sahagatam dittigata sampayuttam asankarikam There are uh, some words to be understood very clearly. Somanasa sahagatam Dittigata Sampayuttam Asankarika. These three parts are to be understood very clearly. Right? Consciousness, the meaning is unprompted, accompanied by joy, and connected with wrong being. Right? Consciousness, you know the chitta. Asankarika. Asankarika means unprompted. Unprompted. Somanasa Sahagatam. Somanasa Sahagatam means accompanied by joy. Dittigata Sampayuttam. Dittigata Sampayuttam means connected with wrong view. Now you can see uh, there is kind of a root. Root, you know that. Root is greed. And there is a feeling. Right? Feeling is Somanasa Sagatam. And Dittigata Sampayuttam, there is a view, wrong or uh, correct view, right view. And Asankarikam. Next you find the Sasankarika, prompted and unprompted. Right? So these three are to be understood here. I mean, the uh, root, you know that. Root is greed and feeling, then view and uh, prompted or unprompted. These three parts, right? The second one, Somanasa Sahagatam 
దిట్టిగత సంప్రయుక్తం ససంకారిక the first one is asankharik it is it means unprompted the second one is sasankharik it means prompted right consciousness prompted accompanied by joy and connected with wrong being right so i will give you examples then you can come to understand uh, you then you can understand very easily cons the third one somanasya sagatam dittigata vipayuttam asankarikam here you find dittigata vipayuttam right disconnected with wrong you that is the difference right disconnected with wrong you the first two are connected with wrong you here the second one and the sorry third one and the fourth one are connected are disconnected with the wrong you right the fourth one somanasya sagatam dittigata vipayutta asankarikam consciousness prompted accompanied by joy and disconnected with wrong you right next four fifth one ఉపేక్షాగతం దిట్టిగత సంప్రయుక్తం అసంకారికం ద ఫస్ట్ ఫోర్ డీల్స్ విత్ సోమనస్ వాట్ ఇస్ కోల్ జోయ్ బట్ ద రెస్ట్ ఫోర్ డీల్స్ విత్ ఉపేక్ష వాట్ ఇస్ కోల్ ఇండిఫరెన్స్ బట్ వెన్ యూ హియర్ అబౌట్ ద బ్రహ్మ విహారస్ to for sublime states you find this upeka but it means equanimity here it is better to get the meaning as indifference right it, it doesn't say about equanimity here so uh, so here you find this uh, uh, what is called indifferent as the feeling here right ఉపేక్షా సహగతం దిట్టిగత సంప్రయుక్తం అసంకారికం ద సెకండ్ సారీ అకార్డింగ్ టు ద నంబర్ దిస్ కమ్స్ యాజ్ సిక్స్ రైట్ ఉపేక్షా సహగతం దిట్టిగత సంప్రయుక్తం ససంకారికం యు కెన్ సీ ద డిఫరెన్స్ రైట్ ద ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ అసంకారిక ద నెక్స్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ ససంకారిక రైట్ అన్ప్రాంప్టెడ్ అండ్ ప్రాంప్టెడ్ ద సెవెంత్ వన్ ఉపేక్షాగతం దిట్టిగత విప్రయుక్తం అసంకారికం హియర్ యు ఫైన్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ దిట్టిగత విప్రయుక్తం ఇట్ ఈస్ డిస్కనెక్టెడ్ విత్ రాంగ్ వి రైట్ లాస్ట్ వన్ ఉపేక్షాగతం దిట్టిగత విప్రయుక్తం ససంకారికం dittigata vipayutta this connected with wrong being right so this is the last consciousness now you know the eight lower mudra chintas eight consciousness rooted in greed right the first four deals with the feeling of joy sometimes the first one is connected with first two connected with the wrong view and the uh, fourth and this is the third and the fourth disconnected with wrong view the last four deals with the feeling of indifference right and the uh, fifth and the sixth connected with the wrong view and the seventh and eighth disconnected with wrong view right so it, now you can understand the difference right as you know that the, there are three roots of unwholesome loga dosa and moha in uh, loga mula chitta loga is the root the term loga derived from the root lo which means to cling or attach so it is translated into this attachment clinging but most of scholars use 
uh, greed. So craving is also used as an equivalent to uh, equivalent of loathing. So in the case of a desirable object of sense, there arises as a rule clinging or attachment, whatever you can uh, use the terms. So in these uh, consciousness, states of consciousness, root is loathe, right? Which means attachment. Feeling. What is the feeling? When there is greed, joy is there. When you are greed, you always try to please your senses, right? So, so manas, uh, feeling of joy is there, pleasurable feeling is there. So, it's an abstract noun, form of su, su means good in Pali. Uh, then the uh, term means good mindedness, pleasurable feeling, right? So, manas was there as a feeling. Then, upeka. Uveka means neutral, right? So, we better to use indifference as a meaning, right? So, view. There was a view, right? Dittigata Sampayutta. You remember Dittigata Sampayutta, Dittigata Vipayutta. Sometimes connected with the wrong view, sometimes disconnected with wrong view. The term jitti is derived uh, with the root this means to see, to perceive, and it is translated into English as a view, belief, or opinion, whatever. You know, when jitti is uh, followed with uh, uh, samma, what is called right view, right belief, then mitta jitti, wrong view. So here you do not find uh, samma or the terms micha, but you find ditti gata sampayutta and ditti gata vipayutta. Ditti itself says about wrong view. The term ditti itself says about wrong view, wrong belief, not about the right view. That's why they mentioned uh, Ditti gata sampayutta, connected with wrong view. Ditti gata vipavitta, disconnected with a wrong view. So, then you find these two terms, asankharika and sasankharika. I think you remember, no? It is better to remember the Pali words. Through the Pali words, you come to the real uh, meaning and, and the understanding, right? So, asankarika. Asankarika means unprompted. Sasankarika means prompted. Actually, these two terms are to be understood in two ways. Right? Asankarika, unprompted. Unprompted by, unprompted means there is no any kind of help from a friend or any kind of advice from a friend or, or whoever you uh, you uh, you associate right and the other thing is there is no kind of hesitation <coughs> right hesitation the sasankarika also understood in the same way right so sasankarika means prompted 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 means there is a Help or advice given by your friend or whoever you associate, right? And the other thing is, it is hesitated, right? I will explain you how these uh, terms are, uh, actually are to be understood uh, uh, in a general way. Then I go to the <coughs> uh, consciousness again, right? The first one, I'll give you an example for this, right? Then you can understand. Imagine there is a boy. Boy, a boy with joy steals an apple. Steals an apple, weaving no evil thereby. 
right? This is the example for the first consciousness, right? A boy joyfully steals an apple, weaving no evil thereby, right? Boy, somanasya sahagata means joyfully. Somanasya sahagata means with joy, joyfully. Dittigata Sampayukta. He doesn't believe that there is a, a bad results of bad commas. There are good results of good commas. He doesn't believe that. That's why it is connected with wrong view. That's why I said we will know ever thereby. Right? And the important thing is, it is unprompted. Unprompted means no one helped him, no one said him to do that. Right? Then we have to add this part. So, a boy joyfully steals an apple, weaving uh, evil no evil thereby and it is unprompted right no one help him no one said him to do right that's why it is called unprompted the second one the, in the same manner we can get a boy joyfully steals an apple weaving no evil thereby but it is prompted. Someone said him to do it or someone helped him to do it. And uh, it has been done with a plan. Right? Because you know that some persons steal without any plan when he is going somewhere or when he is going uh, uh, on the street. He just think to steal it. Right? Uh, the boy uh, sees an apple tree and uh, steal. But someone is not like that. He has seen the apple tree before and he thinks that, oh, I should uh, uh, steal these, these apples, but uh, it is better to be careful and I should uh, uh, investigate whether there are people or not like that. That's kind of planning, right? So that's why it is prompted, right? Now you can understand these two chittas, consciousness, according to the examples, right? It's very uh, important to be alert to understand, right? Then the third one. Uh, boy. Joyfully steals an apple, weaving uh, no harm thereby. Right? With disconnected with wrong. Weaving here no harm, no harm, no. The first two no harm, and here he know he doesn't know. Right? He doesn't know there is kind of a bad result. Right? So, in the first two, he knows that uh, there are bad resultants of bad karma, but under these, he doesn't know. He doesn't know there are bad results of bad karma. That's why it is disconnected with the wrong way. He doesn't know. Right? Then, the fourth one. The boy steals, joyfully steals an apple, uh, weaving. Uh, he doesn't know actually there is a bad resultance, right? Uh, and it is unprompted, right? 
sorry, it is prompted. The fourth one is prompted, the third one is unprompted. Right? So, when you go to these uh, four consciousness, the first two connected with wrong you. Connected with wrong you. The person who steals knows very well there is bad results of bad karmas. And the third one and the fourth one disconnected with wrong you. Disconnected with wrong you means he has no kind of knowledge like that. Right? So this is to be understood very clearly. Right? So all of these four consciousness uh, is actually uh, functions with joyful mind, right? With joy, right? The difference is the uh, wrong view and also prompted and unprompted, these things. Then I will come to next four. The difference is there is no joy. There is no the feeling of joy. It, uh, indifference is there. Right? The boy steals an apple, but there is no the kind of uh, joy. Right? Why? You know that sometimes uh, when he, st uh, he steals an apple uh, and he starts to uh, eat it, but it is not delicious. <laughs> sometimes uh, <laughs> joy is not there, right? So, but here it is mentioned upeka. Upeka means actually indifference, right? Indifference is there. So, uh, the first here, the fifth one and the sixth one connected with the wrong view. He knows that there is bad results of bad karma. And the next one disconnected with the wrong view, the seventh one and the eighth one disconnected with wrong view, right? It means that the person who is, who, is, who does this wrong thing uh, do not know, doesn't know about this, right? There is bad results of bad comments, right? That's why it is disconnected with wrong view, right? So these are the eight states of consciousness rooted in love, rooted in greed. Whatever you do with greed are included under this egg consciousness, right? It is not about stealing. Whatever you do, rooted in good, greed, right? It is not about only the stealing, right? <laughs> then sometimes when I give this kind of example, you always think about that this is only a stealing. No, I will explain you how the evil actions, state evil actions can be uh, uh, classified under these uh, consciousness, right? Now, you may have kind of a general understanding about this eight, right? Then I will go to next. Consciousness rooted in delusion. Sorry, before that I will come to this. Consciousness rooted in hatred, what is called dosa mula, right? Dosa mula jittas. Here the root is hatred, you can understand, right? There are two, there are two. The first one, dhomanas sahagatan patigha sampayuttam asankarikami. Consciousness unprompted accompanied by this pleasure and connected with ill hatred. Then uh, second one, Dovanasa Sahagatam Patika Sampayuttam Sasankarikam. Consciousness prompted, accompanied by this pleasure and connected with ill with hatred. Right? The feeling is, what is the feeling? Feeling is, here yeah, root is, you know that root is uh, dosa. The term dosa is derived from dus, from the root dus, means to be displeased. Right? Pati is derived from pati. 
against party means against and the, to strike to contact so you find these two terms illegal and hatred as uh, equivalents to uh, party girl feeling is dhomanasa right in dosa mula jittas the feeling is always dosa dhomanasa all right Here you find, right? Accompanied by displeasure. Feeling is displeasure. Here you find the difference between two. The first one is asankarikam, unprompted. Unprompted means you remember there is no any kind of help or advice from a friend and no hesitation when you do it something. Uh, with anger there is no instant you can blame someone you can hit someone you can kill someone if there is no hesitation it is means it means unprompted right then uh, the second one is prompted prompted means you need to plan to do it you need to plan to do it and you may have kind of help from a friend or whoever you associate right so these two kinds of consciousness are associated with uh, displeasure you know that i mentioned there are 89 consciousness states of consciousness according to abhidhamma only these two these consciousness these two consciousness are associated with displeasure then you think that all the other consciousness are associated with pleasure, no? Joy. Only these two are associated with this pleasure. Then you always think you think that we all are we all we always are very happy. <laughs> right? But what matters here is not the number of uh, uh, states of consciousness accompanied by this pleasure. More importantly, uh, how often they occur and recur. Right? You can understand. It is not the number of states of consciousness accompanied by this pleasure, but how often they are they arise in our mind. Right? Mostly uh, these two consciousness arise in our mind. They are connected with this pleasure. Then you can understand if you are displeasurable, if your mind is connected with this displeasure, these two consciousnesses are there. Are there. One of these consciousnesses are there. Is there, right? All the other consciousness are associated with different feelings. Maybe joy, maybe may be neutral, but only these two are associated with displeasure. Then I go to the uh, next Akusala Jittas. They are called as Mohamola Jittas. Mohamola Jittas. You know that uh, I mentioned you that there are no names of the persons in Abhidhamma. There are no names of the places in Abhidhamma. There are no stories in Abhidhamma. <laughs> That's why I am not uh, talking about stories. I will not uh, uh, crack the joy, uh, jokes here. <laughs> right? Only the contents. Right? But you can understand. If you uh, go through these uh, uh, teachings, you can come to kind of a good knowledge, sound knowledge about how your mind works and how, uh, especially when you talk about Rupa matter, how the matter and how the Rupa form is uh, uh, impermanent like that, you can come to a good kind of knowledge when you go through Abhidhamma. So, this is the 11th and 12th Akusala Jittas, right? Already we have discussed 10 Akusala Jittas, right? The first state rooted in 
lower, 9th and 10th rooted in hatred, then 11th and the 12th, right, rooted in delusion, right. First one, Upekha Sahagatam Vijiki Cha Sampayurtam. It means consciousness accompanied by indifference, connected with skeptical doubt, right, the first one. The second one, Upekha Sahagatam Uddhacha Sampayurtam. Consciousness accompanied by indifference and connected with restlessness, right. The root is moha, which means it is derived from the root mu, means to delude. It is delusion, stupidity, and bewilderment. It is moha that clouds an object and blinds the mind. You know that how moha is uh, working in your mind. Uh, sometimes moha is rendered by ignorance. The feeling is neutral, neutral feeling is there, right? Indifference is used, better to use indifference, right? So, root is moha, what is called uh, uh, delusion, and the feeling is upekha. Then, you find these two terms, vichikicca, vichikicca sampayukta. The next one is uddhacca sampayukta. Vichikicca sampayutta means there is doubt, right? Uddhacca restlessness, mental confusion is there, right? The first one is uh, clearly mentioned that uh, the person who does not believe about the Buddha, right? He is a deluded person, right? Then, Uddhacha Sampayutta. Uddhacha Sampayutta means restlessness. Right? Mental confusion is there. Right? So, according to the Buddhist teachings, for every evil action, for every unwholesome action, uh, moha or delusion is one kind of fruit actually. Whatever we do as lover, whatever we do as uh, hatred, right? Moha is there. Mohi, moha, delusion is common to all unwholesome consciousness. Right? Moha, is, moha means uh, uh, if someone is deluded, actually we all are deluded, right? So uh, it means that. Uh, we do not know the reality. We do not know the reality as they are. Right? So, uh, this is common to all of the consciousness. Right? These two. Right? So, now we have discussed all these 12 uh, Akusala Chittas, unwholesome Chittas. But I did not uh, uh, mention an example for uh, the uh, first, these two, right? The rooted in hatred, right? So if someone strikes, if someone kills somebody, fatigue is there, hatred is there, right? Then I come to this part, right? As you know that there are 10 evil things you do, we do by our mind, speech and body, right? There are three uh, which are done by our body actions, right? Killing, stealing and sexual misconduct, right? These three are done by the body. So, for these three kinds of uh, uh, evil deeds, how the consciousness, uh, uh, different kinds of types of consciousness function when we are doing these things, right? 
when somebody kills the ninth and the tenth uh, types of consciousness are there. Do you remember the ninth and tenth? Right? Consciousness rooted in hatred. Right? The, these uh, two consciousness, sometimes one, sometimes maybe one arises first and then the second. Stealing. Right? The first eight. Stealing is committed with uh, the consciousness rooted in greed. Right? First eight. Then the sexual misconduct. It is committed with first eight. Right? First to eight consciousness. Right? Then there are four inverse done by uh, speech. You know, lying, slandering, harsh speech, and uh, way talk. Right? Lying. Lying is committed with first to ten consciousness. Right? Slandering, it is committed same with uh, first to ten consciousness. Harsh speech, it is done with ninth and the tenth. Then the what is called empty speech, it is done with one to ten consciousness. I think you can understand what I say, no? Then the, there are three kinds of evil actions uh, done uh, by our mind, right? Covetousness, hatred, and false means. Covetousness is associated with one to eight consciousness, types of consciousness, right? Then hatred. Hatred is committed with the ninth and the tenth consciousness. The false means false view springs with from one, two, five, and uh, sorry, one, uh, the first, second, fifth, and sixth consciousness. Right? So now we can understand how the consciousness, uh, different types of consciousness functions when we do these kinds of evil actions by our mind, speech and body. But it doesn't say that in whole action, for an instance, uh, imagine uh, there is a person who steals, right? Stealing is associated with one to eight consciousness. But when you steal something, somebody may come and try to hit you. Then what do you do? You you uh, you may be uh, strike in turn to him. Then the consciousness is converted into another. It is converted into the uh, hatred, right? Then the ninth or the tenth consciousness may arise in your mind, right? So you know that this happens. Uh, yeah. In a very short time of period, right? Our consciousness changes very quickly, like this, very quickly, right? It changes into another consciousness very quickly. So that's why, in whatever we do, whatever we speak, we speak, whatever we think, uh, we cannot say. This uh, kind of consciousness uh, may arise in this point, but it changes very quickly, right? It is something you need to understand, right? So, this is the uh, 12 types of uh, unwholesome consciousness arising in our mind, right? The other thing, I mentioned you earlier, delusion, moha, is common to all unwholesome actions, right? To all unwholesome actions, delusion. How about the uh, hatred? 
Doors and uh, greed, love. When you are doing something uh, associated with uh, greed, more is there, delusion is there. When you are doing something connected with hatred, delusion is there. How about the greed and the uh, hatred? They never rise together. Greed and hatred never rise together. Because you know that greed is the liking part, the liking nature of our mind. Right? Hatred is disliking nature of our mind. That's why right. these two never rise together. Greed and hatred. Right? Now you may have a kind of uh, knowledge about these 12 uh, Akusala Jitas, Unwholesome Consciousness. Then I move into next part. What is beautiful? Right? <laughs> so, a beautiful consciousness. Actually, uh, these are the consciousness you need to know and you have to perform these consciousness right it doesn't mean that uh, you don't need to know about other things but uh, you know that there is a method of buddhism right first the wrong thing is mentioned first in the suttas you find uh, what is wrong is mentioned first then the right path comes in Next, right? That is the way of uh, explaining the teachings of Buddhism. In the same way, Abhidhamma, you find this, right? So, beautiful consciousness, right? There are uh, 24 beautiful consciousness. Uh, Maha Kusala Jittas, great wholesome consciousness, the right. Maha Vipaka Jittas, Great resultant consciousness, there are eight. Mahapiriya Tittas, great functional consciousness, there are eight. So, I'll be discussing only the first part, right? Mahapusala Tittas here, right? Great unwholesome consciousness, right? These are the consciousness by the names, right? The first one. Somanasa Sagatam Jnana Sampayuttam Asankarikam Consciousness unprompted, accompanied by joy, associated with knowledge. The second one Somanasa Sagatam Jnana Sampayuttam Sasankarikam It is uh, prompted, difference is prompted. Third one, Somanasa Sagata Jnana Vipayuttam Asankarikam. Jnana Vipayuttam. Disassociated with knowledge. Here, the first two associated with knowledge, and then the next two disassociated with knowledge. Right? Then, the fifth one, Upeka Sahagata Jnana Sampayuttam Asankarakam. Consciousness unprompted, accompanied by indifference and associated with knowledge. Huh. Now you can see all of these eight consciousness, eight types of consciousness are associated with uh, Upeka, indifference. First four associated with uh, joy and here indifference. Right? Then, Upeka Sahagatam Jnana Sampayuttam Sasankarikam. It is prompted. Seventh one, Upeka Sahagatam Jnana Sampayuttam Sasankarikam. Here, uh, accompanied by uh, indifference and disassociated with knowledge. Right? The last two disassociated with knowledge. Now you know that uh, there is a feeling of 
Hazım consciousness. In first of all, you find uh, feeling of joy, right? First of all, accompanied by joy, and the last four accompanied by indifference. And sometimes associated with knowledge, sometimes disassociated with knowledge, right? Jnana sampayutta and jnana vipayutta. Sometimes prompted, sometimes unprompted, right? Here, this, uh, uh, this term, jnana sampayutta and jnana vipayutta, it is better to understood, right? It is better to uh, know about it, right? So, jnana sampayutta, jnana, this term jnana is used in the different context. In Buddhism, here jnana means he knows very well about this, right? It means that uh, he knows there is good results of bad, uh, good comes, <coughs> good results of good deeds. He knows about it very well. According to with that knowledge, he is performing good actions, but. You know that there are some persons who has not this kind of knowledge, but he performs good actions. You know that some people are doing good things with the knowledge. Some people are doing good things without knowing. There is good results of these karmas like that. Right? So that is the way. Right? So, however, uh, with knowledge or without knowledge, they will be born in heaven or uh, in a human world, right? So all of these uh, concerns have good results in the future, right? So I'll give you, you one example for the first one, right? So right? If someone gives something to a beggar, if someone gives something to a beggar and he is very joyful and uh, no one said to him to do it but it's called unprompted and he knows very well there are good results of good commerce <coughs> with all of these things uh, he gives something to beggar Joy is there, right? Joy is there. And the last two, you mean, I mean that the third and the fourth one, disassociated with knowledge. A person gives something to a beggar, he is very joyful, and he doesn't know, he doesn't, sometimes he doesn't believe there is good results of good comers. But he is performing it, he's doing it, he's doing these wholesome actions. Right? So that is the way we have to understand this. The, this upeka, how when you do something wholesome, upeka is there, indifference is there. You know that uh, uh, when you develop, when you cultivate. Uh, uh, four sublime states, what are called Satara Brahma Vihara, Brahma Vihara, right? So, uh, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Obeka, right? So, here, uh, although uh, according to Brahma Vihara's equanimity is mentioned there, here the neutral feeling is to be understood, but uh, when you go very deeply, we can understand sometimes uh, this can be identical in some way, right? However, neutral feeling is there. When you do something good, uh, sometimes you are you are very joyful, sometimes indifference feeling is there, right? But you are not uh, displeasurable. I mean, uh, it is not associated with displeasure. Whatever you do for them, is not associated with displacement, right?
So this is the kind of question to be arised, uh, which is very important question, right? Uh, the holism and consciousness disassociated from knowledge could really be called holism. You remember uh, four types of consciousness are disassociated with uh, with knowledge, right? So. The, given, uh, the answer is given here. The commentary and explanation is that it is called wholesome only in indirect way. Indirect way right? As the fan made not on, of uh, uh, palm values but of max, etc. Right? It's called figuratively a palm fan from its resemblance to it. So consciousness disassociated from knowledge is called wholesome. It is further observed that from an ultimate point of view, what is called Nipariyayana, consciousness associated with knowledge, is called handsome in the three senses of mental health, arogya, mental, uh, uh, mental health, and anavajjata, mental purity, and kosal, skill, whereas consciousness is associated from knowledge, is called wholesome, only in respect of the first two senses, right? This shows that skill associated with consciousness is due to the uh, presence of the knowledge factor, right? So now you can get the answer for that question. So sometimes the wholesome consciousness disassociate is disassociated from knowledge, but mostly with knowledge, right? So now uh, you can understand how these uh, calls and consciousness perform. So I just mentioned these locus this, but no need to explain because I'm not going to talk about these things. Uh, so these are called as supramundane moral consciousness, or when you go to the higher level of wholesome, uh, right? you find this kind of consciousness. Consciousness belonging to the path of extremely and once returning, never returning and the path of arhatship. Right? So now uh, you can understand these uh, uh, 12 Akusala Chittas and also uh, beautiful consciousness. Right? In day to day life uh, you if you have kind of uh, knowledge about these uh, uh, types of consciousness, you know how to avoid from bad actions, what are done by the mind, speech and body. And then you know how to perform wholesome actions, what is called kusala, in your day-to-day -day life. So. Uh, I think you know that I see some of the places uh, who study Abhidham very deeply, <laughs> right? But uh, this talk will be beneficial to beginners, right? Not for those who study Abhidham very deeply because they know about these things very well, right? So, but this talk will be will be very beneficial for those who study Abhidhamma, who like to study Abhidhamma, who are interested in Abhidhamma. Uh, so one thing I need to mention here that uh, if someone uh, wants to study Dhamma very deeply, please go to the Abhidhamma. It is one thing, right? Because uh, you know that uh, uh, we find some of the later uh, additions to Abhidhamma. For an instance, Katavatupakarana. Katavatupakarana was composed in the uh, time of the Buddhist Council, right? Almost three years later after the demise of the Buddha, right? But uh, uh, although we find kind of later development of the teachings of Abhidhamma, why Abhidhamma is useful to study? You know that there is not a living Buddha now. 
if something arose, uh, if something is there uh, connected with the doctrinal factor, we can ask the Buddha, right? But now there is not a Buddha, right? The teachings are there, especially Abhidhamma teachings were treated by the disciples later according to the teachings given by the Buddha. So, you know that there is something very important point. The Buddha taught the uh, main teachings, then the disciples were treated, uh, giving some explanations to them. Explanations are there. Right? So, those explanations are very helpful to understand them. That's why we need to learn, study Abhidhamma very deeply. Right? According to my point of view, although I spoke about uh, consciousness and the types of consciousness, uh, the Abhidhamma philosophy uh, mainly depends on matter, rule. Right? Uh, to be enlightened or to uh, enter the uh, final goal of uh, Buddhist, we need to have kind of knowledge about this matter, rupa. But we just study these uh, uh, types of consciousness. They are very beneficial for us uh, to avoid from one wholesome and to perform the wholesome things. But if we want to uh, uh, understand something uh, with wisdom, with the uh, knowledge of insight, uh, the understanding of matter is really, really important. So, so this talk is, uh, as I mentioned you, this talk is uh, useful for the beginners, but next uh, we are going to talk about uh, matter on uh, 30th, no, on 30th December. So that talk may be very beneficial to those who study Abhidham very deeply, alright? So this is kind of starting, right? Start of this talk. So however, now I'm going to conclude the, this session. So I talked about uh, 12 Panhosam and the 8 Beautiful Consciousness which are very beneficial to be understood and uh, please try to be avoid from unwholesome and try to cultivate wholesome thoughts in your mind and to uh, be wholesome in your body, speech, whatever you do, right? So for this, sati should be there, mindfulness should be there. Mindfulness is very beneficial, right? So if you are mindful, you know how your mind works, how your mind functions, right? Then it is... Uh, it, is, it helps to avoid from unwholesome and to perform wholesome, right? Now I am going to uh, wind up this talk. Uh, thank you very much for your participation and being patient. If you have any questions, your questions are welcome. Marina, is sisters, any questions? Thank you for the sharing. Very grateful. Actually, it's my first time listening to Abhidhamma sharing, so this is an introduction for me. And now I understand why people actually go for Abhidhamma classes. Um, <laughs> uh, I just want to clarify something. Um, on the, you have here like uh, Upeka, Sahagatam, Titigata, Sapayuta, Asankarikam. And then there is this part there which is connected with wrong view. You have it, I mean, under the uh, different consciousness, say for hatred. So you have that, that word, the phrase, connected with wrong view. Which? Um, many, yes, many. Ah, disconnected with. Uh, disconnected or connected with the wrong view. Yes. Uh -huh. So that means if the person is doing a deed, if it's rooted, yeah, in, just say, uh, let's see, I have to go back. Sorry. Um, oh. It's quite a lot of slides. 
So let me scroll. Huh? Okay. Uh, yeah, if um, you can see this slide. Yeah, under the green one, there's a lot with connected and disconnected. That means when you're doing the action, you know you know your knowledge, you know that it is wrong. Is that what you mean by connected with wrong view? Ah, no. They have no knowledge of Dharma, but they know it is a wrong action. Yeah. But even by a normal common sense as a human. Yeah. That is what you mean by yeah. connected yeah. and disconnected. Connected with the no, the first one, first two, connected with the wrong view. Wrong view means uh, if someone does not believe there is good results of good karmas, he has that view. It is wrong. But you see, like other uh, religions, I'm just I'm just curious. Like other religions, they know you sow what you you reap what you sow. In a Christian, that's what they, they believe. I'm not Christian, uh -huh. but I'm just curious. Because I have a lot of relatives who are Christians. I'm just curious. Yeah, there are some eth ethical issues they, actually. You yeah, know that but something they also is know. very good for us, some, sometimes it's not good for other people. Right. Mm -hmm. But here, I'm just according wondering, to, for those people, do they have knowledge? Are they considered connected with wrong view or disconnected with wrong view? They are, but they know. They are they connected with the wrong they view. They are connected with the wrong view. Because they don't know. They are connected with the wrong view. So not disconnected with the wrong group. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. And then the, there is another one. Uh, your latest slides, which has the ten. Yeah, the consciousness in ten evils, and then you have like killing, stealing, and then you have like um, lying, slandering, which you cover the whole spectrum, one to ten. Yeah, yes. everything. Yes. So you have uh, Upeka, which is indifference, and then the, you have, before Upeka, you have the joy, right? When you say um, that the, the, the consciousness is present in the 10 evils, 1 to 10, that means you can have joy and indifference at the same time. At the same time? At the same time. No, or, or, or it is one state at a time. No, you know joy the, same, the same consciousness does not arise in the same time. Right. It changed quickly. It changed quickly. Yes. So that's why not in the same. So it time. covers the whole spectrum, yeah. but very quickly it flips. You know that according to the Buddhist teachings, uh, 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 if some kind of consciousness is there, mm -hmm. there are no two. It sometimes it may be changed very quickly. Then another consciousness arises. But not it's slightly. But speed. as I mentioned you earlier, in the same action. Maybe different types of consciousness are there. When you are doing something, sometimes different consciousness may arise in the mind mm. according to the situation. Mm. So I gave you an example when you steal, somebody may come and see and strike you, right? Mm. Then the, your your consciousness may be changed into another. Mm. Okay, okay. But well, I'm getting it, love. I think it's more like it's flipping. Very quickly. Yes, very quickly. You can really. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, Reverend Bhante, one question. <coughs> On this uh, assertion with wrong view, with wrong view and without wrong view, uh, which one have a higher karma with British? Uh, Alright. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's about results and so. If someone knows this is bad, if that knowledge is doing this wrong thing, actually, uh, uh, when you talk about the results, uh, he is doing it without inten with intention. Sometimes without intention, right? So, uh, according to the uh, Buddhist point of view, it is very clear that if someone is doing something with the knowledge, with knowledge means uh, if someone knows that this is good, this is bad, and there are bad results of bad commerce, with this, if someone is doing, I think it is uh, uh, more powerful than that. Because he knows it. Right, it is more powerful, but uh, I, 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 I'm not sure about the results actually. 
because I, I cannot focus on it. Results may come in maybe in the same manner, maybe in different manner. Okay, brothers and sisters, any more questions? Okay, if there's been no more questions, uh, our highest thing to one take care of here and there for the excellent sharing.